Hey guys, it's me, Arthur, and you are watching How to Draw Creepy Creatures. Now, on yesterday's episode, we did the Skinwalker, and today I thought it would be a really interesting challenge to do something that wasn't quite as humanoid in shape, because I noticed that the last couple creatures that we did, they were all humanoid, which is great. Humanoid monsters are really scary. But when it comes from like an artistic point of view, if you're trying to practice different stuff, if you do one specific type of creature too many times, I notice that you kind of lose the ability to draw other animals. So every once in a while I throw in something that doesn't look quite as human, just so I can practice a little bit. So I thought it would be fun to do the Kelpie, which if you've read Harry Potter, you probably know what that is. But for those of you who are less familiar with that, the Kelpie is a fairy horse from Scottish folklore that is believed to live in lakes and rivers around that area, especially in Loch Ness. It is a predatory creature that takes the form of a horse that walks around ar along the edge of the shore and lures people to come and ride on it. And when they do, it rushes into the water, drowns them, and eats them. It's supposed to look like a really pretty horse, except there's just one or two things off about it that are just really creepy. So, let's get into it. Alright, now, because this its body is going to be a little bit elongated, I'm going to turn the paper this way so that we can get more detail. Yeah. Now, horses have a very square back, like their butt area, like their rump. So, that's what we're going to start with. The rib cage. A lot of people are daunted by drawing something with a horse or equine-like body. In fact, there were, uh, I was reading this thing about Renaissance-era portrait painters who would refuse to paint horses just because they thought that drawing them was too difficult. So when I first started getting into drawing animals, I was just like, oh, how am I going to do this? But then I realized, just break it down into very simple shapes, just like drawing a humanoid body. All right. Just draw all the skeletal structure. Yeah, see? Just draw its shoulder blades too. They might not have arms like we do, but they still have shoulder blades to connect to those powerful front legs. And if you remember the Skinwalker episode, um, I mentioned that horses kind of have those very square joints in their legs where that bends, so do that. Yeah, you'd think that horse wouldn't be very scary, but let's once I get into it, we're gonna make this guy look real creepy. Okay. Okay. All right. This is what you should have so far. Yeah, if you can see that. Okay. Now we're going to do the basic muscular structure. Okay, so remember not to add too much muscle around the horse's legs. If you're doing, if you want to use like a draft horse as a model, then definitely add a bit more muscle. But we're just going to do like a normal, everyday standard horse for this design. So their legs will be kind of thinner. All right. Okay. Now, when I'm filling in the chest area, you kind of do like a gentle swoop right here, and then you add where the belly would be. Okay. It doesn't look very much like a real horse now, but you just draw that to kind of define those areas so you know where to add the flesh later. Like, you know what? I don't really like the way that this leg is positioned. So I'm going to move this a little bit so that it's more symmetrical, more foreshortened. And I am going to have its right leg bent a little bit so it's more suggestive that it's walking because it's supposed to stalk along the edge of the shore. It just sort of walks along the shore waits for people to come and ride it. Like, oh, look, it's a pretty pony. Let's get on its back. Honestly, though, 
What I don't get about this legend is how many people just see a weird horse walking along the edge of the water and their first thought is, well that's somebody else's horse, I guess I'll ride it. Because I would just assume that the owner would be right there, but apparent, maybe in Scotland it's like a common courtesy where if you see somebody's horse, you're automatically allowed to borrow it. I don't know. Maybe it's a cultural thing. Scottish legends are cool though. Also, what's cool about this is that I'm trying to stay away from doing too many European creatures because you're, because it's often kind of bombarded, these types of things, with European ones, and I wanted to branch out and do stuff from other cultures. But I do love, like, uh, Celtic mythology and stuff like that, so I'm glad that I was able to get something like this in here. So, all right, this is what we should have so far. See, as time goes on, it will get a little bit more and more horse-shaped. In fact, let's draw a little bit here so that we know where we're going to put the mane. Well, not quite a mane, but I'll get into what it is later. Okay. Okay. Now remember, the Kelpie is always supposed to have something... Change pencils. <laughs> the Kelpie is supposed to always have something that's just a little bit off about it, so from far away it looks like a normal horse, but as you get up close you see that there's something wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to give it hooves. I'm going to give it like these webbed amphibious looking feet like a frog's. So we're going to draw the lines where the toes would be. Remember, frogs kind of have little pads on the end of their feet. Okay. Kind of has this membrane between the toes. Yeah, like this. Okay, now let's do the second foot. And you kind of see what the second foot looks like. In fact, the water horse theme of this like evil lake dwelling or river dwelling horse that drags people in and kills them is oddly very much universal it occurs in almost every culture uh, even though this is scottish there's a native american equivalent called the horse head where it takes the form of a horse that looks like it's drowning so when a good samaritan comes by and tries to save the horse it's not until they realize that it has yellow or red eyes that there's something wrong with it and that it's not actually a horse in fact there's a lot of cryptozoologists who have been trying to prove that the water horse exists that it's actually some type of seal or uh, undiscovered type of freshwater manatee that just has, happens to have horse-like features there really isn't any scientific evidence to support it, but it's an interesting, I guess you could say, a 21st century adaptation of these legends. Kind of like trying to inject science into it, but frankly, I like the evil fairy version better. It's just creepy and it's fun. Okay. Now, 
Let's draw out its ribs a little bit. I had to find this muscle just a little bit like that. Okay. All right. Now let's get on to the face. The eyes of a horse, when you're first doing them, they can get a little bit difficult, but just sort of like that slope, and then you draw the curve of the eyeball. Like that. Alright. Also, a horse has a very strong jaw, like a very strong muscle around its jaw, so you want to make sure to emphasize that a lot. This is what we have so far. I think that he needs a little bit more detail around the face. So I'm going to erase that a little bit. Alright. Let's do his ears now. I want these to be like raggedy, almost pointy, more like fins than real ears. That would just look very strange, so we're going to do that. Okay. It looks like a horse, but there's just something a little bit off. There's like an almost frog-like quality to the face, which is good. Now, there's a lot of different stuff about what a Kelpie's mane is supposed to look like. Some say it's like this long, beautiful hair. Others say it's like this thick kelp material, like it almost has seaweed growing out of its head. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to draw a fin that looks like a mane. So just do like the individual membranes in the fin, almost like a goldfish fin, like a big fancy goldfish fin, like those, I don't know what you would call them, but uh, I guess like a black moor almost, how they have those long flowing fins that look almost like hair. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. Now, in order to emphasize that this is a membrane, I like to draw these little, um, almost like a spider web, these little, I guess you would call it areas where it's shaded just a tiny bit. Just do like these lines in between. Let's add a little bit more thin here. Okay. 
Yeah, it's almost like the fin on a sailfish a little bit. So you should maybe look up a picture of a sailfish so you kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. But you can kind of visualize where I'm going with this now. So. Okay. Well, let's make these legs a little bit thinner. Because if the horse looks a little bit more slender, more like it belongs through the moving quickly through the water like a frog almost, that would be good. Okay, so. Okay. Okay. Now, for the tail, I thought that instead of doing a normal horse's tail, we could do a tail almost like a goldfish where it's just this big flowing fin. going to make it a little bit less neat, more raggedy. Okay. Hey, sorry about that. That was just my dog whining to go out. Okay, so actually, I was just thinking, I don't really like this raggedy pattern. I thought that this would look good, but I actually think that it would look better if it went for the more like this, almost like this weedy pattern, kind of like foliage. Like, um, have you ever seen a picture of a sea dragon, how it's got that leafy, those leafy appendages that kind of blend in? So we're going to do that. Kind of like... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's better. That looks more like foliage. It kind of looks more like he would blend in with the water. Okay. All right. Also, it would be good to maybe add, like, stuff stuck to him, like trailing on him, like a little bit of weeds, like he's just risen up out of the water. Okay. Yeah, just kind of do like hair almost. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Also, I think it'd be cool if we gave him like feelers, like a catfish almost, so that he could feel his way under the water. Now let's get into some finer details. Remember, slow, steady circles. I'm doing flesh. I kind of imagine the flesh bare, kind of like the skin of a manatee or something like that, where there isn't really any hair. So we won't be doing like shadowing like we would do for normal hair on a creature. We're just going to do shadowing under the assumption that it's bald. So. Do a little shadowing under that fin, that fin mane thing. Also, 
also going to do the pupil kind of like a frog's eye. Let's see? Yeah. Because of the light, the way that the light's hitting it, you got the shadow of my phone. So, yeah, that's a little better. Okay. I knew that there was something a little bit off that I was doing. I didn't turn on that light I usually had. Alright. Shade around those little fingers or feelers. Now shade a little bit of him around the muzzle, but not too much because otherwise you won't really be able to see his mouth. So once you shade there, kind of fill in the details with a sharp end with the, uh, the sharper side of the mechanical pencil just a little bit. Okay, so that you don't lose too much detail. All right, let's shade under the ears. And add a little bit of detail on the top of the head, kind of like define the ridges of the skull. Okay. still see okay. I moved the paper around a while. I wanted to make sure that I didn't cut off the view from the camera. Okay. Now fins, you kind of shade them a little bit like hair but not too much. So it's the same basic principle, but you don't make it quite as dark as you would with hair. Let's add those details, those ridges in between. some detail here so let's fill it in with the darker side of the lead on the pencil now we kind of want it to look like it's dripping so like it just came out of the water so add some drops around here here I'm going to add drops wherever there's like a low point. Okay. Maybe add a few puddles on the ground where, where water's like pooling underneath it. Okay. Like that? You kind of do a couple wavy lines through it to see where the light and shadow are playing on the water just a little bit. Because it's not going to be a perfect mirror reflection, it's just going to be like warped, ripply. That's how you do uh, water. Okay, so. Okay. Alright, let's do the shadow underneath him. Okay. 
but I think it'd be kind of cool to do like kind of a mottled pattern on his skin just a little bit. Kind of make him blend in with the water like you see on some horses, how they blend in with the surrounding bush. So yeah, if you've seen that in like wild horses like Mustangs, they often have these patterns. So we're going to give him like kind of a dappled cloudy pattern. particularly around the rump and on the back. Kind of break up his image from the surface. Okay, here we go. Sign off with your artist mark. And you, let me show, back it up a bit. You have just learned how to draw a Kelpie. All right, so that concludes the lesson. Like, share, and subscribe. Totally send in more requests because I love doing requests. And also, uh, anybody who's done a lesson on here and has a complete drawing, send your drawing in to ArthurWroteThis at gmail.com. And with, as long as you add your written permission in the email, I will show your artwork off on the show. I, would, I love audience participation, and so I think that... It, uh, Using this as a format to show off people's finished work is great. I will include your name so everybody knows that you did it. All right, so thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye.